Hi and welcome to this little session on motorizing the Camera SD1 slider dolly. Now we're going to attach a motor, a speed controller and an interferometer to the slider so that we can control the movement of the camera, not only for regular recording but also for time-lapse sequences. I remove all the screws uh, underneath the slider and attach a flat double bracket on the right side. I'm using the existing screw holes on the slider for proper mounting. Mounted on top of the flat bracket I've put together a 1.5 inch channel bracket, two flanged pole bearings, a 6mm shaft, two shaft clamps and a 6mm pulley with 10 teeth. On the left side I've mounted a 3 inch channel bracket, a 40 rpm at 12 volt motor with a 6mm shaft and a pulley with 10 teeth. They are mounted directly on the already existing a quarter inch holes on the slider. The belt used for this setup is a 51 inch XL belt and it moves the slider pad with XL belt mounts on each side. The controller has a display and an on off switch and a potential meter for controlling the speed of the motor from 0 to 100%. There's a DC in and a motor out on the controller. Here's a little drawing of the wiring with a 9 volt battery pack. I've also attached a reverse polarity switch to control the direction of the motor, meaning the slider can go back and forth. The switch is hooked up after the motor out on the controller, and here's a little drawing on how it's wired. Here are some sample footages of the setup. Remember this motor is going at 40 rpm at 12 volts, and since I use an 9 volt power source, the effective RPM will be about 30. To be able to use the setup for time lapse, I had to make the slider pad move in steps. I wired the 2.5mm stereo socket that can house an intervalometer. With this I am breaking the ground wire signal coming from the controller. This is a bit risky since the intervalometer only used 3 volts and the setup runs at 9 volts. But it seems to work fine so far. I've seen examples where they have broken the signal wire coming from the potential meter instead, but that didn't work for me. The socket contains 3 wire points, one for ground, one for focus and one for shutter. We are using the ground and shutter points to break the signal. This means that the power will only go through and start the motor when the shutter button is activated, either by press or programmed in intervals. I've also wired a little power switch that can override the intervalometer, meaning I can use this setup for regular filming without pressing the shutter button all the time. When syncing an intervalometer on the camera and one on the slider, it's important that they do not act at the same time. The camera must be completely still while shooting, so the slider and the camera should act every other time. There is also a little lamp wired that indicates when the motor is receiving power. Here is the drawing of all the wiring. The electronics is stashed in a little box with the batteries inside and it can be attached to the motor bracket with these little knobs and screws. Here are some sample footages with the intervalometer in use on the slider while the camera shoots a time lapse. The slider can be mounted on a tripod and you can experiment in different angles and speeds. If you have a heavy camera and heavy lenses, the weight of the camera can make it sink a little bit on the edges, but if you combine two tripods or a second point of support, it will be quite steady. Here are a few sample shots where the slider is mounted on a tripod. <laughs> 